like we're making a difference in, in people's lives by better understanding. new science, I think it can hopefully change the world. It's cures for different types of cancers. Understanding of the process of protein folding. That's chemistry. That's a chemical reaction. I can help show. I'm Diane Bunce, and I teach chemistry at the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. If you live in a democracy, you're going to have to vote on some issues that have a chemistry or at least a science underpinning. So in order to be a full member of a democracy, on be able to vote on science-based issues, you have to have some idea of what the science is really all about. And what we'd like to do is to make sure that people can take the responsibility of voting in a democracy important and understand the chemistry behind it and not be swayed by the media. The George Pimentel Award for Chemical Education is designed to bring attention to work that's being done to uh, upgrade the quality of how we present chemistry to the world, both through our students and through outreach to the general public. So we try to do research on things that are uh, urban myths about learning. Chemistry being too hard is something that we hear all the time. Or people will tell you, well, chemistry was my worst subject and I never did well and they always seem embarrassed. And what I usually tell them is that if you had trouble with chemistry and you really wanted to learn it, then more than likely we taught it to you incorrectly. We taught it to you the way we learned it, but not necessarily the way the brain operates. In order to make chemistry really relevant, we have to be able to teach it in a way that makes sense to people. And what we say to them is, you know, do you like cooking? Let's say baking muffins. Why do you put baking soda or baking powder into muffins? And why do you add milk to that mix? And mostly it's to generate carbon dioxide. And as the carbon dioxide is generated in the batter, the batter raises up in the oven and the oven cooks it in the up position. That's chemistry. That's a chemical reaction I can help show you in a Ziploc bag. And then I can go to the board and give you the equation and help you understand how chemists would write that. But you know chemistry already. It's part of your life. And mo when most of the kids hear about it in that sense, or most of the people, uh, even colleagues that hear about it in that sense, they're intrigued enough to think that maybe they would be able to understand it. And of course they can. I mean, chemists are smart, but we're not the only geniuses in the world. I mean, if we can understand chemistry, so can you. So very often if you're in the teacher's room or in the faculty lounge, uh, you'll hear professors say, oh, these students are just so lazy. You know, I, I told them this and then I put a question on the test and they still didn't get it. They're just not studying. And they're not as smart as they were 20 years ago when I first started teaching. And that's actually a myth. And the myth has to do with the fact that just because you say it doesn't mean that students are able to learn it. The idea that you can use one set of notes and just dust them off each year is pretty silly because you have different people sitting in your room. A lecturer is somebody who comes in and gives the same lecture regardless of who's in the class. A teacher is someone who has to see the whites of their eyes and has to interact with them and when that glazed look comes over has to change direction and find a different way to approach it. So teachers are not born, they're skilled and they have a hunger that is really driven by this desire to really help people engage in the learning of chemistry for their own benefit, not just for the teacher. If you don't understand what I explain in chemistry, then I've got to find another way to explain it to you, something that clicks with you. So the holiday tie-ins for chemistry started as a result of trying to get people over their fear of chemistry. And the one thing that's common to most people, no matter what your culture is, is food, and the celebration of food at family holidays. So we started with what most people see as a joyful time, and we said, let's take what you normally understand about these holidays, what you normally do, and help provide you with another filter at looking at the same things, but looking at them to understand the chemistry. There's also a side part to this. If you can explain the chemistry behind some of the things we do at these holidays, People are so excited about it that they want to explain it to other people at the celebration. And there you have a propagation of chemistry. So you're not just affecting the one person that you've empowered, but now that person goes on to explain chemistry to the other people at the table. Now you know you're successful because people don't talk about chemistry at family get-togethers unless they're A, confident about it, and B, excited about it. So the holidays were a natural tie-in. It was a cheap trick but it works because it puts people at ease. I went into chemistry 
because I didn't find it all that easy as an undergrad. And in many cases, I was just ignored because I, I didn't seem to have what it took to be a chemist. And what I found as I proceeded is that I just learned chemistry a different way than it was being taught. And once I found my own way of learning it, I could go to the top of the class, so to speak. And I didn't want other students to feel that self-doubt that I had felt. And I decided that at least the people that came through my classroom were going to have an opportunity to experience chemistry in an uplifting way. So I've really dedicated myself to the idea that anybody who wants to learn chemistry can. And if I have to stand on my head to make that happen for you, I will.